financial service. I took some time out today. Uh, for the year, let's get a few more of these. Let's get a few more of these in. These hidden, right? If you've been following the hidden series. If not, go back. I started it, I believe, last year. So you got some catching up to do. Uh, we are in the Apocrypha, right? But we're in Ecclesi Ecclesiasticus. Um, that's chapter 15, 16, 17, 18. Y'all, we at 18. We making, we making progress, right? All right, so 18, let's go to nine. Y'all know I pull out the meat out of these books, out of these books, you know. Uh, these are books that the church don't touch. Uh, it's a book you won't find read on Sunday. Uh, they don't incorporate the whole Bible. Uh, so I come to bring you this to spark your interest, to get you to go study some of the other books. Because ain't nowhere in the Bible can they tell you it was only 66. Continuing, considering the people who gave you this book kept on reading it themselves, even though they took it out for you. All right? So, chapter 18, Ecclesiasticus. We're going to go, uh, we're going to start at 9. It says, uh, the number of a man's days at the most are a hundred years, right? It says, as a drop of water into the sea and a gravel stone in comparison of the sand, so are a thousand years to the days of eternity. Therefore, God is patient with them and proweth forth his mercy upon them. He saw and perceived their end to be evil. Therefore, he multiplied his compassion. <coughs> Excuse me. He multiplied his compassion. Why? Because the small amount of time, on the max side, a man lived 100 years. Therefore, God had to multiply his compassion due to how small of a pinch that is to eternity. So this is why we see the wicked whose days seem to be prolonged. Right. But then those who ain't wicked, they died early and all the way. They got it right. They got out of here. All right. But let's say a man's years says, hey, on the, on the high side is a hundred. And God don't want nobody to perish. Why? Because he knows how long eternity is. In comparison, it's almost. Um, let's say if you compare it on a, on a, on with, a, with an earthly mind, it's not fair. Why? Because I got this amount of time. Let's see if I can get that in the camera. I got that. I got it. I got that amount of time, right, on earth to prove my love to God and, how, and, and to be obedient and to be a servant of the Most High. I get this amount of time compared to everything you see behind me, right? Everything you, the, the rest of the world, the rest of the galaxy. You get this amount of time because that's how long forever is. So God's mercy is, is long with us. You know what I'm talking about? Um, let's, great, uh, let's grace down to 15. It says, my son, blemish not thy good deeds, neither use uncomfortable words when thou givest anything. If you've seen the last message I taught, if you're on the, uh, the uh, workshop for the Soul Channel and not the Brother Al Channel, please find the Brother Al Channel because you are missing videos. This is a, Right. By the time this video hits the channel you're watching, the Brother Al channel has so many more videos you don't even have access to. So if you're on my backup channel, the Workshop for the Soul channel, I know this is Workshop for the Soul. But if you're on the backup channel called Workshop for the Soul, right, come over to the Brother Al channel and come pick up some of this because I dropped the video about giving but I'm giving something, but I got uncomfortable words to give. I just went over this. So it says, my son, blemish not thy good deeds. Don't don't make the goods you do have a blemish on them. Why? He says, neither use uncomfortable words when thou givest anything. Right? Here you go. Don't use this for no drugs. <laughs> right? Here you go. I'm going to give you this. Don't you, don't you sell this and go do such and such and so with You're going to give somebody something and offend them at the same time. Here. Yeah. Uh, let me call your landlord to see if you really need this rent. And if they say you need it, you know, 
What are you doing? I'm, I'm basically calling you a liar. You say, hey, brother, I need help with my rent. I say, well, uh, let me call your landlord and I'll verify that's what you need help with. They confirm it, I'll help you out. What am I doing? I'm lending with uncomfortable words, calling you a liar. That's just a few examples, right? Let's go on. Let's go to 21. It says, uh, we, if you just, um, Ecclesiasticus uh, chapter 18, we in verse 21, it says, humble thyself before uh, thou be sick, <laughs> right? He say, humble yourself before you get sick. And in the time of sins, show repentance. Hmm. Humble yourself before you get sick. He say, he say, humble thy, humble thyself before thou be sick. What is that going to tell us? That when we not in humility, sickness can come upon us. It say, yo, humble yourself before, as if if you don't humble yourself, you about to be what? Sick. Now I understand the Bible says chance happens to us all, but you have to ask yourself. Did you have a season before you got sick or years before you fell sick that, that you weren't humble, that you had no humility? Before your hair fell out, <laughs> was you in a season that you didn't have humility? Before you came down with that illness, right? Now we understand if there's a Joel Bourdain crisis for all of us headed our way. <laughs> I ain't talking about that, but right. That's a, I'm bringing out word that I don't, that I ain't never read before in the regular, you know, in, in, in the in the King James version. But in the full version, it says, "Say humble thyself before thou be sick." That's that's wild to me, right? All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter nineteen, uh, verse two. It says. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. It says, and he that cleaveth to harlots become impudent. Hey. So we could take that a few ways, right? We could say he's impudent. He can't have no children, right? He's sterile because he messed with these hoes, <laughs> right? Or he has an impotent heart. Mm. Lacking, empty non-existent oh, i thought that was heavy let's go on uh it says uh let's go to six and this is where i'm in we're gonna go from six stick with me to ten uh check this out he that can rule his tongue shall live without strife so if you can watch your mouth you can live without what strife it says um and he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. You 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 hate you hate ranting. You hate babbling. Just calm, just talking for nothing. The Bible says you'll have less evil. Right? It says, Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee, and thou shalt um, thou shalt far never fare never the worse. You, everybody done done that. Told something to somebody that was told to them. God said, you ain't going to fare the worse if, 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 if you don't do that. He said, rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. Don't repeat that, right? It says, whether it be to a friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives. And if thou canst without offense, reveal them not. If you can't do this without offense, you better not reveal them. Why? Why does it say that? It says, for he heard and observed thee, and when time cometh, he will hate thee. He heard what you said to somebody else. His word got out and now he hates you, right? It says, if thou hast heard a word, let it die with thee and be and be bold. It will not burst thee. Like sometimes, right? You're like, man, somebody put something on you so heavy. God say, let that die with you. Huh? It ain't going to burst you. 
That's my time with y'all, brother. I'll let your service. Oh, God. Yo, I got uh, all things new coming out. Christmas Day. Uh, please go support the album. I think you'll really enjoy it. There's a lot of great songs on it. Um, that's it for the...